folks, so for today's video, um, I thought I would do a little switch up of what I've been doing recently, where lately I've been talking about some of my least favorite and or worst uh, makeup collabs that companies have done with influencers, big corporations, intellectual properties, etc. And I did ask y'all in various places, for what are some of your favorite collabs that people, influencers, I think most of the answers I got were about influencers, not as many about specific intellectual properties, but I thought I would talk about some of my favorite collabs. It really got me thinking because the new Nima Tang and Dose of Colors collab just came out, which I think is very beautiful. That'll be the first one I talk about. I think it's a really good collab. I think it's a really good product, a really good collection of products. I do wish that they sold them individually, just a personal preference because I really want that orange lip gloss, but I don't necessarily need an orange liquid lipstick. But Regardless, I think this little kind of capsule collection collab is really nice. I think Dose of Colors has done a really good job as far as collabs go. For me, I think the really good sign of a collab, something that is bespoke to the influencer individually, but also something that is across the board, um, usable and likable, something that other people will enjoy, but something that the people who are being targeted also are really gonna like. So, Dose of Colors, so far you've done a good job. And I will say, um, Dose's liquid lipstick formula is one of my favorite formulas. So, if you have been thinking about the Nima Tang uh, collab, I can vouch for their liquid lipstick formula, even though I don't personally wear liquid lipsticks much anymore. Um, it's still very comfortable. Okay, next. Um, this was one one that I actually owned <laughs> and this was before the times. Well, I guess in the midst of the times, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, it was the midst of times. Jaclyn Hill and Becca Cosmetics original champagne pop highlighter. I had this, I bought this highlighter. It broke before I finished it because uh, Becca's highlighters notoriously are pretty soft on me and I've, I've broken Moonstone, I've broken Champagne Pop, I've broken Prismatic Amethyst. They're soft, they're beautiful highlighters. And I think that's why it was so successful. Like they still have it today, which reminds me, I need to like see what kind of things they're gonna have on sale when they go out of business. It makes me sad that Becca's going out of business to be honest, because I think there were far more companies that deserved to go out of business before them. But I digress. Uh, the Jacqueline and Becca highlighter was everywhere. Like I didn't even watch Jacqueline. I've never really watched Jacqueline before. So for me to go out and buy it showed that it like pervaded the YouTube space, even beyond Jacqueline Hill's audience. And it was a really good highlighter. Like it was really good. It was almost too dark for me. So it wasn't like a super, super light highlighter. So it was very across the board usable, I feel like. It was the second, uh, shimmering skin perfector that I bought. Yeah, the first one was Moonstone and I I might have to buy Moonstone before they completely go out of everything because it's just such a good highlighter. Like I love that highlighter. I had the liquid one for a long time too. I use that and I mix it with my foundation sometimes. Anyway, the Becca and Jacqueline collab was like, the first one was good. The later ones ended up being terrible. Like the Prosecco pop and then the like champagne Prosecco eyeshadow palette, they like, took that off the shelves before it was really even on sale. The rest of them were a hot mess, but the original Champagne Pop was good. <laughs> it was a good collab. It was a good highlighter. It was a good product. That's the thing is that a lot of times companies will kind of cheap out on the quality of the products because they know audiences of a certain person are gonna buy it regardless. But I feel like Becca actually put in like all of the quality that they put in their other highlighters into this one. So it just became a part of their line already, um, which is the sign of a good product, okay? Next, um, speaking of highlighters, previously on Abby Talks About Makeup Collabs, uh, we discussed the Nikki tutorials and and Too Faced debacle, which uh, Nikki Tutorials was wronged by Too Faced in every sense of the word. But Ofra, Ofra uh, came in and Nikki did a collab with Ofra and Nikki did, I think, was it two highlighters? Everglow, actually. It looks like she um, kind of split them up initially, but Everglow originally was like a three split up highlighter. There was like a really light kind of pearl shade and then a nice like mid-tone champagne shade and then a really pretty bronze. And I feel like this was a really good highlighter. It was one that was versatile. It was one that you could use on the cheeks, on the eyes, kind of everywhere. 
And then she came up with glazed donut, which was an even more kind of blinding version of their highlighters. It's a frosty white. So this one's definitely like a Nikki shade. But again, I feel like these fit in already to their highlighter line, which at least from my perspective, they're really known for their highlighters. And so the fact that they have these highlighters that are branded with various people, like I have the Samantha March one, Nikki Tutorials has done multiple ones, any of these highlighter collabs that they've done ended up in their like regular range, like for a while. And it just, it was the same quality as their regular products. <laughs> this was a really good collab. Like I, I never bought glazed donut. I didn't buy a lot of these. I will say I only own a few of them, but from like my interactions with people on the internet, these are my assumptions and my um, deductions, if you will. Next, a uh, couple of ColourPop collabs. Um, I have ragged on ColourPop for their terrible, terrible collabs in the past. Um, and I still do when they continue to do it. I will say the new Barbie collab does not look bad. The new Barbie collab actually, I didn't look at it and uh, become disappointed immediately. That's promising. <laughs> the Sophia Nygaard and ColourPop lipstick collab, I bought two of these? No, three of them. I bought three of them. I still use uh, the nude shade like all the time when I wear lipstick. Like it's still one of my favorite nude shades. Um, I don't wear the green one too much because it kind of bleeds into the lip lines. And then the dark red one I like, but I feel like this was a collab that really made sense. It was priced really well. It really fit into Sophia's kind of brand at the time where she was doing all these like bad makeup science videos and like creating her own lipstick shades. And it really worked. Packaging was really cute. It was just perfectly branded and marketed. And I feel like they did a really good job at actually making something that really looked like it came from Sophia's mind. Like it, it didn't look like they took Sophia Nygaard's name and slapped it on some lipsticks. Like it looked like Sophia helped them make these. So that I feel like was a really good collab overall. Next, uh, the I have two Midas collections. I guess I only have the noon one in here. I think the dawn one is downstairs. The Midas Cosmetics and Neon MUA from Dust Till Dawn collection. And this was a series of four face palettes. Um, this is the noon one, which is the second one. There's one lighter and then two deeper. I'll have an image of it up on the screen. But this collection, I feel like really set a standard for a lot of other brands doing these face palette or these bronzers for like all skin tones. Like I feel like now when companies like ABH come out with these like face palettes, you see a lot of people, myself included, comparing them to these palettes because Midas really did it right. Midas and Neon MUA really did it right here. And they're compact. The price point is really great. And it just, it was one of those collabs that again, reached far beyond the initial audience. And it, it really helped put Midas out there. And, and I'm super proud of them, like super proud of Midas and Neon MUA for making these and for upping people's standards on face palettes for all skin tones, okay? I really like the contour in this one particularly. And then the highlighter I've used the shit out of like, oh boy, like that, that's pretty, ooh. Links to these products, if they still exist, will be down in the description. If they're if they're still around, I'll have links to them. And then, oh boy, uh, should I grab this whole box? Yes, because I still have it. Yeah, there. Oh, get over there. Get. Okay. My palette is downstairs. Am I biased? Yes, I am very biased. But the Midas and Smoky Glow palette was one of my favorite releases of 2019. Was it 2019, 2020? It was 2020. Yeah, it was 20, the beginning of 2020. I got it right at the beginning of quarantine. <laughs> There's nothing in this box, but I kept it because it's cute and Hannah's one of my best friends. Am I biased? Yes. But is this palette great? Is this whole collection good? Yes. I know for a fact that Hannah put in so much fucking time into this. Because of that, it's amazing and I love it. And it's one of my favorites. It's one of my favorites. Okay, next. Here's another palette that I have. I will stand on, this was one of the last good products that ABH ever put out, the Jackie Ina and ABH palette. Um, lo look at her, she's beautiful. She's be she's beautiful. Just, just look at her. Like, also, the packaging is so freaking cool. It's like snakeskin, but like a pastel iridescent time. It's beautiful. The formula on these are great. They are ABH's old formula. As much as I am annoyed by ABH in general, all the time now, 
the old palettes that I have, I still like the formula and I'm still gonna use them. <laughs> As much as ABH has let me down, I can still hold on to these, okay? <laughs> so this is great. I almost felt bad for Carly Bible because um, after this collab, like after this palette, there weren't gonna be really good ones for a while. And like the Alyssa Edwards one was right before this. They just weren't given enough time. Like they were never given enough time to really love this and like revel in it. So this is a great palette. Next, do I have any other ABH things? Oh, yeah, okay. One more ABH thing. Um, this again is another product that came out years ago that I do regret not buying at the time. The Omri Z highlighter. This was such a coveted highlighter. Oh my God, people were losing their minds about this fucking highlighter. I had no clue who the hell Omrizi was when this came out and I was like, who is this? Why do I care? Because I didn't really like follow Instagram models and like she doesn't really make YouTube videos much. So I'm like, I, I, I literally didn't care. But from every review I ever saw about this highlighter and I was like, I kind of need this. And then I never bought it. You know, you win some, you lose some. And this was a very successful highlighter launch for them. And I don't know why they didn't re-release it. Why they didn't come out with more shades of it. Like, why didn't they do that? They brought the Nicole Guerrero palette back, but they didn't bring back the Omri Z highlighter. I don't, I don't understand their decision making lately. Coming out with really bad face palettes and facial wipes. ABH has lost the plot. But yeah, the Omri Z highlighter was so successful for them. Like it was ridiculously successful for them. Next. The Kaleidos and Angelica Nyquist palette. Also, congrats, Angie, on 100,000 followers. Congrats to you. Angie reached 100K yesterday as I'm filming this. I don't own this palette. I do not own the Club Nebule palette yet. I might buy it soon. I just, it came out right when I was in the midst of moving and I kept missing out on the times when it was available. It shows how successful it was for Kaleidos. <laughs> like it shows how successful this release is for an indie brand. Palette's colorful and it 100% matches Angie's aesthetic. Style, the, the packaging was all, all very Angelica, very successful for an indie brand. I've been really excited to see indie brands really excel this last year, especially with really well done collabs with influencers. So seeing, seeing indie brands really come out with well done collabs makes me happy because it helps everybody out, to be honest. And then just this last year, Shroud Cosmetics and Butte Beam, the It's Frickin' Bats palette. Holy shit, that thing blew up. Oh my God, holy hell. <laughs> That thing blew up so much bigger than I think Betty Jean ever imagined. And uh, I can imagine it was very overwhelming for a while. I can imagine it's still overwhelming, to be honest. That palette, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's pretty. I don't have it, but I wanna buy it when I can. <laughs> it was beautiful, it was gorgeous, oh my God. I do have a couple of intellectual property ones that I feel like were done pretty well. Across the board, Anytime a makeup company has done a Disney collab where they're focusing on the villains, they're better than the ones focusing on the princesses. Venomous Villains from MAC is an iconic collection. Venomous Villains, oh my God. Venomous Villains was one of like, there were multiple lines of Venomous Villains. MAC, again, used to be that bitch and now they're not anymore. Um, and now they're doing this weird Cruella thing that why? I don't know. But the original Venomous Villains collections that MAC put out, so good. And it was before Disney collabs were tired and boring. And even the ColourPop Disney Villains collections were not bad. Like they were pretty good. The artwork, the eyeshadow palettes, the Super Shock stuff, everything was really well done in the Villains collection. The Princess collections are always boring as hell. Oh, do you know who deserves a makeup collab? Yzma. Oh, seriously, so many of the Villain collections that any brand has done, way better than the princess ones. The villains always have better makeup. Anyway, yeah, those were all the ones that I could come up with. Um, I definitely am not like an all seeing, all knowing makeup consumer. There's definitely a lot that I probably missed. <laughs> some of these probably aren't your favorites and some of your favorites I didn't include. So yeah, um, let me know what some of your favorite makeup collabs are in the comments down below. For today's song of the day, let's see. I have been watching 
death note josh and i watched like five more episodes earlier tonight still not done still not done i was only on like episode 26 i thought i was further along we've reached like episode 31 now so still haven't finished it by the time this video was out um but today's song of the day is actually the opening theme the second opening theme that they did for death note which is like a all metal band um called maximum the hormone which just that band name alone is just so over the top and i love it but the song's called what's up people and it's super fucking heavy Heavy and it's super fucking loud and there's lots of screaming and lots of distorted guitars and you might not like it but I do. <laughs> yeah angry music has been my catharsis this year so you'll notice that if I'm talking about songs now they're usually louder than the songs that we're talking about like a year and a half ago. Um, so yeah what's up people by Maximum the Hormone is your song of the day. I know that the CDC mentioned that everybody who's vaccinated can just go anywhere, most places without masks on. I will not be. I will still be doing the exact same thing until I'm not terrified anymore. Don't feel like that you have to start doing what other people say you can be doing now. If you wanna keep wearing your mask around, if you feel better wearing one around and feel more secure and less anxious, keep doing it. Don't let somebody tell you, oh, you don't need to wear that now. Oh, it's fine. Why are you overreacting? You're not overreacting, okay? You're not overreacting. Everybody is gonna move at their own pace. I will not be okay going out into large crowds for a while. But, um, but yeah, so I know that there were many of you, at least on Twitter, who also were feeling very anxious and very frustrated with the somewhat premature announcement of lifting mask requirements for vaccinated folks because I don't trust any stranger at this point. Like, I don't trust anyone. I also just feel like I don't know how to talk to people anymore. If you are feeling anxious and you are feeling like this is too early and you wanna keep wearing your mask out and, and keep keep doing exactly what you're doing for your own mental health, I'm with you there. Anyway, um, links to all my social media will be down in the description below. My Instagram, my Twitter, and my Twitch, as well as some products that I mentioned here that might still be available. <laughs> if they're still available, I'll link them. If not, I am also sorry. But yeah, those will be down in the description as well. Um, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, if you are watching this on Saturday, I will be streaming later live on Twitch or currently uh, sometime today. I will be streaming on Twitch on Saturday. So thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.